it is going to be the ultimate expression of, of everything that we've been able to do here and just doing it that much more. It's very satisfying building something that you know is going to be used. There's the typical challenges of a new chassis, you know, new environment, but also just the uh, size and weight of the vehicle. It's different, I think, than what you'll see in other similar adventure trucks or expedition rigs. It can last longer, go further, go ride harder. We try to design and engineer things that will inspire people to want to live. Let's get it puffin', I'm looking away. Go tell mother I'm cooking the game. Flow like water bubbling up where you want me to make. Take you back in the day, filling the neck and the main action. All right, so tell me about this thing behind us. What is this? <sighs> well, that is a, I'd say a, a mock-up of our camper shell because it was uh, going to be so long till we got the fiberglass shell, we, we needed a physical model. During the day you are driving over these rocks and boulders and kind of going, going crazy and at the end of the day you hop into the back and it's going to be very refined. Of course you'll have a queen size bed up on the cab over portion. Uh, the shower stall that we have built separately will actually be in this little hole. Then you'll have your galley um, cooktop. You'll eventually have cabinets all the way around the the top portion as well. Uh, bet they know who I am, flow and clinical. Trying to walk a mile of my shoes, you look pitiful. Storyteller as a brand kind of came on when um, adventure vans were kind of just taking off or just getting started as a trendy kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The only thing you saw in the market was a lot of uh, one-off companies doing uh, one-off builds for a particular client. It's kind of the same idea um, that we treated the vans with taking that work that people would do for customers, the quality of it, the ingenuity, the creativeness, packing it all into a one floor plan and uh, making a repeatable build that way. So we're kind of doing the same thing with this Hilt. It's almost like it named itself, because when you're doing it highest and best and the biggest and the most, you're doing it to the hilt. And that's kind of what this vehicle is. It's a tool for people to live life, to go places, to move big, and to do it to the hilt. It kind of seemed on the nose for us, but we like it. Or how do we make it not only more sophisticated and elevated with its engineering, but make it more accessible to mere mortals like us, to make it to where it was financeable and um, serviceable. These things have been outrageously expensive, um, built to order, uh, hard to get, hard to buy. We wanted to solve for that um, by making it simpler to own, easier to finance, and also, in a lot of ways, probably cutting the barrier to entry or the price point in half without sacrificing a single bit of quality, if not just elevating all aspects of the quality and capability of the vehicle in the process. Since day one, my involvement's been um, engineering design. Um, so over being over that department, it's been an awesome opportunity to kind of uh, work with the rest of the the design team, the conceptual on the there on the conceptual side, us on the um, engineering side, but work off of their awesome ideas and concepts and really turn those into reality and turn those into manufacturable parts and pieces that we can build at scale. And uh, we have a unique opportunity to kind of mass produce a unit that um, allows us to bring engineering and manufacturing practices into a, a vehicle that otherwise wouldn't be possible. I mean, we've built on chassis before, so we're, you know, we're definitely used to dealing with um, OEM chassis and stuff like this, but from, you know, I guess what you can see behind here, um, you know, we're having to provide a full turnkey solution on the back end of a truck. So everything from what kind of suspension, that's completely different. And we've got a great engineering team with Mike. Um, they've done a fantastic job with learning those, those 
it's 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 obviously it's a larger big uh, vehicle it's a heavier vehicle so there are going to be different things that need to be solved there's always a what's next and for us it's it's the hill it's the the next evolution of what happens when uh, when people outgrow a van or want to go further and see more and stay longer. Tested so far, it is a, basically an unstoppable Ram 5500 with a um, composite box on the back that uh, your living quarters, two queen size beds, it's a full stand-in shower, a wet bath, and just bigger and better version of the mode. Might have seen all the footage of when we were testing the chassis with, uh, with three large water tanks on the back of it. We were doing our best to try to understand how the chassis was going to react to the weight of the box or the capsule put on it before we actually had a capsule to do it. It's 100% hydraulic. So there's no mechanical springs, no, no metal springs like everybody, like vehicles are typically on. The way the Hilt is so much more unique than a lot of other vehicles in the market is it actually has a zero torsion system, which allows the box to float independently from the frame itself, which helps improve the performance off-road as well as on-road. Driving the Hilt is a pretty magical experience. It's a large vehicle, but the suspension is it's magical, right? It's adjusting a thousand times a second to all kinds of different inputs. And don't forget that the truck and the capsule are moving independently. So when you're driving the vehicle, you don't really notice a lot of this, but a lot of the times in some heavy crosswinds, I was able to be in a chase vehicle behind. And what you can observe is if you take a heavy crosswind, you will see the capsule move over a couple of degrees and then in about two seconds, it writes itself. And that is the suspension literally adjusting to the new weight loads. The day the capsule got delivered was probably, in my opinion, the worst day to have anything delivered that's large because it's, you know, it's pouring down rain, it's cold. All right, here we go. Game time? Yeah, it's game time. Let's get all these out of the way. Um, hopefully this guy actually knows how to drive a truck. We're about to find out. <laughs> Packing inside the container looks really good. It looks like it held up. Of course, we won't know until we get it out and opened up. <laughs> Seeing the actual physical size of it was pretty impressive. You know, it was kind of like a reality of like, oh, we're here. This is what I, this is what I signed up for. This is what I was promised. All right, we're good. Let's do this. That's probably good. Only about an inch and a half clearance on either side of the fiberglass, so they're really tightly packed inside those uh, containers. Um, and it was a little nerve-wracking backing and pulling the, the shell out without scraping and doing body damage. We, we got it out. There's no damage to the box. Nobody got hurt. Nobody, nothing. Nothing really went wrong as well. We didn't know what we were going to get. When it got here, we tried to take measurements and really figure out the differences from CAD to the real model. So that should be should well, three, be seven three eighths. Point three, like oh, point point three eight. eight. Point eight three. Point eight three. Oh, so that's one. The advantage of purchasing from a company like Storyteller is that we're an OE, we're a manufacturer. What that means is when you purchase this vehicle, it will have a warranty and it will have an enormous amount of engineering behind it. And there will be dealers all over the country where you can take it and get it repaired. It's not a custom vehicle that can sometimes come across as a science experiment. We build production vehicles that we can service well into the future and um, that get uh, purchased with financing and insurance that's appropriate for a manufactured vehicle, not a custom uh, build. So the insulation we chose to go with is the best in the market for what we're trying to do. Getting, getting the foam in is the first step before we can get to this step of actually putting things in. So it's, uh, it's very important and honestly, it's kind of cool to watch. So that's why we had a big crowd, of, crowd around. It makes a big difference like having good insulation, you know, especially with like 
where all these things are going to be. Like, it's good to be able to just keep the inside cool and keep the inside hot when you need to because there's no telling it's going to be in a desert or it's going to be in freezing temperatures. So, like, you'd think it's foam. It's going to be kind of soft. Like, it's actually pretty firm. Or it showed us some of the challenges around what uh, what insulating this thing is going to be, but overall it looks like it worked out pretty good. <laughs> Say your name for the camera. Uh, my name is Darren Trussell. Darren Trussell. Yes. We have certain dudes that specialize in building RV boxes and certain dudes that specialize in uh, building trucks. And I would lean towards more of the, the truck side. That is uh, ancient witchcraft to me. Uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, tape measures aren't really my, my thing. What's your, uh, what's your favorite part of the Hilt project so far? Probably the team we got. Absolutely. Uh, if you were a hot dog, would you eat yourself? With ketchup. Two for eating themselves. Love it. Dylan, hello. What's your favorite part of the Hilt project so far? What's your favorite part of the Hilt project so far? Is that connected to something? No, it's not connected to anything. There's no one here. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. Welcome back. <laughs> it's um, good to be back. When you design something in a 3D software, you can have it dimensioned perfectly, exactly what you need. But when you manufacture that, there's gonna be like tolerance differences from the exact dimensions that you might've had um, specked out in the drawings. It in particular has a lot of tolerancing differences from the actual CAD data. That's why there's been a lot of iterative processes that we've been working on. going to be the backsplash. It is printed on a aluminum dye bond and we wanted a sort of like rustic, worn, black and silver map of like old map. It's edited a little bit so that the contents fit visually within the pattern cut out of the backsplash. The idea was that we wanted all the modern functionalities and all the modern luxuries of anything you might find in a high-end vehicle like this, but we wanted to package it in a very approachable, comforting, friendly, cozy manner. We wanted people just to feel like this is home, this has character, and this isn't just a cold, barren place for me to sleep at night. We are test fitting the headliner pieces we're just trying to see what changes need to be made. I'm just trying to How get much it. more you got to go? Uh, it was really exciting that it got sent off the paint because it means like, hey, we're getting to this cohesive thing now. It's not really paint actually. So there's bed liner that is underneath it all. And then they spray the color that you see, that tan color over the top of it. It increases the amount of ruggedness, you know, gonna resist like scratches and stuff like that. My like little logo tag. That looks important. Only if you need to know the name of your vehicle and who built it. If the building of the truck was like a progress bar from zero to 100, where would you say it is right now? Probably 85%. The last 15% is like all the details. Um, and then there's probably 5% we don't even know <laughs> is like undiscovered. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're pretty close. I mean, like I said, the big chunks are done. I, I would say that the magic of, of this project and anything that Storyteller has or will ever dream up always goes back to the curiosity and the creativity and the commitment of the team. The amount of complexity that was overcome and challenges that were <laughs> just that were battled down in this, this process. It's really pretty stunning to see the way the team 
came together and just with all the right uh, skill set, the right mindset, and the right heart, and the right attitude, just really envisioned what a customer or an owner or a driver or somebody that was wanting to experience this kind of vehicle or to tap into that kind of life, what they were really hoping for. And so it wasn't just math and data and science, it was also art and creativity and wonder and imagination. week of everything coming together was chaotic for sure but uh, you know what it really showed was again the the, the team that that we have here the, the team coming together everybody rallying to to get portions done whether it was things that were on their to-do list or not I, I, I hope at some point there, there's a chance for everybody to pause as full tilt and light speed as everybody's been moving I hope there will be a chance where everybody can just pause and reflect and, as, and be as proud of themselves and one another and the team as as they should be because this was this is this was a big lift but it's a, a very special outcome. I, I don't know that I could say that I've ever been around a vehicle that has been as capable that is civilian. I'll just put it that way. Now that it's together, you know, it's, uh, I'm pretty excited to uh, to actually get out and go find out what this thing can do. We're, uh, you know, I'm gonna take it out into uh, all the different climates we can find, take it into different scenarios, find out how it does on the road, find out how it does in the heat, how it does in the cold. Um, so, you know, from here we're gonna we're gonna chase bad weather is what we're gonna do for right now. So the the first first step of things is is checking out how well does the camper react. Um, the actual living quarters. Uh, can we handle 130 degrees? Can we handle negative 50 degrees? We don't know any of that right now. We have math on what it is, but uh, now now's the exciting part. We get to take it out into those environments and gather a bunch of data and actually see how it performs. So I'm, I'm excited.